Rabat, an ancient city on the Atlantic coast of Morocco, steeped in history but often overlooked by tourists. Hi, we're Chris and Lydia. Join us today as we explore Rabat's historic Kasbah, its giant unfinished mosque and its royal mausoleum. We then set course for the breathtaking blue city of Chepchao in northern Morocco. But first, it's time to depart Casablanca, where we've learnt so much about Morocco's history and seen some amazing sights. Good morning everyone. We're here in Casablanca. It's our final day in Casablanca this morning and we're about to set off on our trip. First stop is to Rabat and then we're going to Chef Chowan, which we're very excited about. We've got a beautiful day. It's mild with longer pants, t-shirt and uh, comfortable and yeah, sky's clear. So we're going to have some breakfast. Had an amazing orange juice yesterday. It's the best orange juice I've ever had in my life. I don't know what they do with their oranges here, but I want to find out because I want to bring some back with me. It's incredible. So um, looking forward to that with my breakfast. I was dreaming about orange juice <laughs> last time. We're bidding farewell to the highly underrated city of Casablanca and the lovely Val de Anfa Hotel by the beach where we've spent the last couple of nights. We're excited to join a small group tour and spend the next 17 days traveling around Morocco. There's only 14 of us on this tour, but we're traveling in a full-size bus. That means plenty of space for everyone and a seat to ourselves. From Casablanca, we head north along the coast for about an hour to Morocco's capital city, Rabat. Rabat has the most green areas all over the country. Welcome to Rabat, the capital of Morocco and the administrative centre, also the home of the royal family. Rabat's ancient fortress, the Kasbah of Udayas, dates back to the 12th century is the oldest part of the city. We enter the Kasbah via the ceremonial Almohad Gate. We're standing in front of the main gate of the Kasbah here in Rabat. We're about to rock the Kasbah. <laughs> rock the Kasbah. Rock the Kasbah. These days, the Kasbah is largely a residential area with lots of lovely little lanes and alleyways and traditional houses all painted white. At the end of the main street, the pathway opens up onto a large terrace. The Kasbah was built high on the hill to guard the mouth of the river and the city below and the terrace offers great views of the city of Saleh to the north and the ramparts the beach and the Atlantic Ocean to the west. Lemon and lemon, 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 lemon
<laughs> Lemon and almond, so that's gluten free. Yeah. Mint tea out. Looks like wool. Looks pretty hot. So that's this mint tea is so minty. Oh, it's hot too. Is yours, a, is yours got sugar in it? Mm. <laughs> this mint tea is so minty. Yeah. That's a quintessential. Uh, <laughs> what does it taste like? Mm, minty tea. It like mint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is. It does taste like uh, toothpaste. It's that minty. <laughs> well, that was some very nice mint tea and pastries. I uh, really enjoyed that. That was the best mint tea I've had so far in Morocco. Only a mile upriver from the Kasbah lies the iconic Hassan Tower, the minaret of an unfinished mosque from the 12th century. Had the mosque been completed, it would have been the largest in the Western world at the time, holding 20,000 worshippers. The Hassan Tower is the only place I think where you can actually photograph the Royal Guards or any police or military for that matter in Morocco. But here we can take photos, we can take selfies. And these, are, these horses are so good. They just stand here and let everybody come by and take photos. When the Sultan who commissioned the mosque died in 1199, construction stopped. It seemed that nobody else wanted to fund the completion of the mosque, so it remained unfinished, leaving only the incomplete minaret, a few walls, and 348 columns standing. Across the square from Hassan Tower is the mausoleum of Muhammad V, the first king of independent Morocco and grandfather of the current king. The mausoleum is the final resting place for King Muhammad V, as well as his two sons, King Hassan II and Prince Abdallah. Construction of the mausoleum was completed in 1971. It's ornately decorated with colourful mosaic tiles, carved plaster and beautiful cedar and mahogany wood ceilings covered in gold leaf and stained glass windows. More colourfully dressed royal guards keep a watchful eye on things while the visitors look down upon the tombs from the gallery. Admission to the mausoleum and Hassan Tower is free of charge. After a busy morning exploring Rabat, we set off again for the 250 kilometer drive north to the blue city of Chef Chowan. Look at the stork's nests on the top of the telegraph poles. Yeah. Agriculture is a major industry in Morocco and the fertile plains northeast of Rabat are some of the most agriculturally productive areas in the whole country. We had no idea that Morocco could be this green. We drove north through the fields of oil seeds, grains and olive trees, passing shepherds tending their flocks, gradually approaching the foothills of the Rif Mountains. Stop for the toilet, the roadside in the middle of the country. Oh, look at how pretty this is. Look at the umbrellas. Look at the little leaves out big and the little plants and the seats outside. And... 
and the little restaurant here. What's it like? I'm not a pistachio ice cream fan, I've just decided. Okay. <laughs> As the late afternoon sun started to cast its shadow, we started our climb through the Rift Mountains to the blue city of Chefchaouen. Set into the side of the mountain, Chefchaouen is famous for its blue washed houses and streets, earning it the nickname the Blue Pearl of Morocco. Even at this time of the afternoon, the city radiated a definite azure glow. We'll explore Chef Chowen in our next episode, but wait until you see our accommodation for tonight. Welcome to Chef Chowen, the blue city. It's getting dark, but it, you can still see the blue. Yeah. This was my number one go-to spot yeah, in yeah. Morocco, so I am in my element. As you go. And opens up to this amazing view. Look at this. Unbelievable. And then we haven't even reached our room yet. <laughs> Whoa, swimming pool to boot. You've got tears in your eyes. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. Oh. It's incredible. Come here, honey. <laughs> oh. It's lovely. It is. This oh. is what we come for. <laughs> yeah. Even looking this way, look at the rocks and the mountains behind us. It's a lot to take in. Do you want to go find our room? Yep. The porters have brought the bags up the hill. All right. Well, let's. Lydia can't stop taking photos of everything. Okay, we've got to take. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, that's the key. Oh my goodness! Wow! Well. <laughs> okay. Turn the light on in there and see. My goodness, this is incredible. This, oh my goodness, look at this. So we can have a party up here if we wanted to. We're only in Chef Chowen for two nights. I want to stay here for a week. What's the view? What's this? Oh, a little kitchenette. Yeah, a little fridge. A cute little kitchenette, too. Yeah. fridge and kettle. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's a huge shower. Oh my god. 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 Oh my god
my god. This is incredible. Look at the sink and the tiles. I'm in love mm. with this place. I'm in love with this place. This is incredible. Mm. This has to be one of the best places we've ever stayed. Thank you for visiting Rabat with us today. We're really looking forward to exploring the beautiful city of Chefchaun in our next episode, and we hope that you'll join us. Please hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you won't miss an episode. Also, if you'd like a personalised tour of Morocco, we've placed a link to the Moroccan tour company that we're travelling with in the description below. See you next time!